So we've made it to part four of the Math for Carpenter series. And like I said, I just want to run through this quick, not to bore you guys, but just show you some of the things that are involved. It's not that hard, but it gives you the edge once you know some of the math and how to use it. This scenario is me, my real life experience. I'll throw some pictures in here. And I built a new garage, but I knew that the height was gonna be very close to the soffit height of my house. And I wanted it to look bang on. I didn't want it to be an inch and a half off and make it look goofy and be like, oh, look at some rookie just frame that however he wanted it. I wanted to put some forethought into it. And even my neighbor said the other day, he's like, he said to my wife, he's like, yeah, you can tell he's a carpenter. He's, he matches soffit lines up. So he's a, he noticed, which is good. That's what I wanted. And I want to share a little funny story with you guys too, because this is the, this is what separates the man from the boys. And the funny story is, is when me and my little brother, we used to work cattle with my dad. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't care who you are. If you work cattle, you're going to get mad. So when we were kids, like there were gates hanging on the ground. And we weren't strong enough to close them fast enough. So the cows would get out. So dad would get mad and he'd be like, ah, oh, just let a real man do it. So, right? So that's what I'm saying is I'm going to focus in on this. I want to show you guys the math. And so you can see it zoomed in. To show you, I'm not going to pre-figure it out and be like, it's so easy, look at it. It's going to take a little thinking, but I'll show you how I did it. Probably one of the most crucial things you need to know, and this is if you're doing an addition or anything, is your heel height. And that's the height from the top of the wall, or the bottom of your truss, to the, where the, the heel is, the end of it. And if you draw a vertical line up, the measurement from the point right there this point to there is your heel height or in school they called it the wood above plate if you're building rafters that's a crucial step so if you're doing an addition whenever someone asks me to do one I have to either rip open their soffit and figure out what their heel height is to match it or when I order the new rafters I calculate my overhang based on the new heel height versus the existing heel height. That's what makes the biggest difference is knowing that factor. So this one, and I hope I'm making it clear guys. My heel height is 12 inches. So from here to here, 12 inch. So and then what I figure out is I have a 512 pitch on my garage, rise over run, 512. Let's erase that beast. First I'm going to figure out what my roof slope drops from here to here. Not to here, and I'll show you why. So I have a two foot overhang. Now the other thing you gotta keep in mind is when you're doing trusses is everything's based off theory. If my, let's say I totally botched my framing and my heel was way overhanging my wall, that doesn't affect the height of my soffit because everything is based from the heel height in relation to the overhang. So I manipulate my rise over run so I'm a 24 inch to the outside, but I'm minus an inch and a half, so I'm 22 and a half inches to here. I'm gonna calculate my, my rise, or my drop, from the top of the plane, the top of my top cord, to the very top of that corner. So we're gonna go five over 12, equals X is my vertical drop, over 22 and a half inches, which is right here on the inside of my wood fascia. So 22.5 times 5 equals divided by 12 is 9.375 inches, which is 9 and 3 eighths. 9.375. Okay. Then I have to figure out how much, because if you've ever framed, when you plane it through, there's this little drop here from your fascia. Let's try to draw it. Here's my rafter. 
and here's my fascia and it's a two by six there's this little triangle but from here to here it planes through so it's straight I have to figure out what this drop is so again I'm 5 over 12 equals X over 1.5 inches 1.5 times 5 equals divided by 12 is 0. 0.625 so that's 0.625 inches, which is 5 eighths. Then I factor in 5.5 inches for a 2x6 wood fascia. And then I factor in another 0.625, because typically your soffit, well, for surely your J trim over on here is 5 eighths of an inch. So I want to figure out the total drop from the top to the bottom of my soffit. So I got to add up all these numbers 9.375 plus 0.625 plus 5.5 plus 0.625 equals. So from the very top, very top to the bottom of my soffit is how do I draw that so it makes sense to you guys? Right here. Sixteen point one two five inch drop. Now I know that I have a twelve inch heel height, so I know I just minus twelve inches minus twelve. So from the top of my wall to the bottom of my soffit is four point one two five inches. So. What's 0.125 and 1 8th? Let's try it. Yeah, so 4 and an eighth. So now that I know exactly the from my soffit to my top of my wall, then all I did is I took my laser level and I made some shots. And I got, I don't get me wrong, I got confused on this too. I had to double, triple check but I essentially ended up being able to calculate my wall height so I knew okay my soffit height was this high over here I wanted it to be the same took my laser level did some math and then I had to add four and an eighth to the top of my wall then right then it just comes into simple framing I'm using two top plates and a bottom plate a minus four and a half then I know my stud length but that's that's where the math can really be advantageous and let me know if it helps you guys and let me know if you have any questions or other problems you'd like me to solve. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or check us out on some of the following.